Welcome back to the deck build guys. I'm Jeff from Home Renovision and today is our final day of construction here on the deck project. Today we are going to actually build us our privacy screen. But before we can do that, now that I'm going to lose access to the other side, I've got to come over here and I've got to build me uh, some skirts. I got to close that all up. Basically what I'm using here is a couple of over five quarter boards. Remember, whenever you order a large amount of wood for a project like this, you're going to have a few that just really aren't desirable. And that's fine. Usually they have a warp or a bend. Now it's time to cut them in half, okay? So we can use that wood as our support under the nosing, and then we can add lattice underneath after that, all right? I'll show you as I build, but let's just walk through this. I have to adjust my blade height. Whenever you're ripping long pieces of wood, it's hard to work with a table saw, especially with wet lumber. The blade just gets killed instantly. These little thin blades from Diablo work really well on wet wood, so I recommend using a skill saw. I'm gonna just take that, adjust my plate, just a little bit higher off the wood. So I'm gonna cut clean through, all right? And I am actually cutting into a piece of pressure treated lumber. So it's gonna act like my table today, and I'm just gonna rip, 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 and I throw one screw at the other end. I'm good to go. So here we are, time to rip. So the board is five and a quarter. And so we're looking at cutting at around the two and three quarter mark, all right? Now in this situation, one piece goes at the top and the other piece actually goes at the very bottom of the skirting to protect the lattice from damage. So I'm not too concerned about being right on the money. It's more about being consistent. So there's two and a half, there's two and three quarters. What I'm gonna do is use my finger on my plate up against the cedar as my guide. And helps if I plug it in. <laughs> there we go, that's more like it. Now I'm gonna pull this forward just to get started. Here we go. Now, we've got top and bottom. What we're gonna do is take the first board, put it the cut side up, right up underneath the nosing. Right. Now it's next to impossible to do this on your own. All right, so what I'm gonna suggest, get an extra pair of hands going. I'm gonna throw an extra screw right there. Set the wood on it. Okay, now I'll come to the other end. And this, uh, I'm gonna start off right flush here. There we go. Okay, we'll just put a screw every two feet, it'll be fine. Oh, it's the wrong kind of screw. Of course, whenever you're working outside, make sure you're using ACQ screws. It means it's rated for contact with cedar and pressure treated lumber. Indoor screws will rust. Now we want to measure for our lattice. And we don't want to go all the way to the ground. Now, uh, if you are in a three season climate, you don't really get a winter, then you can feel free to measure right to the ground. You'll be fine if you don't get frost. But in a four season climate, we have almost two inches of gap here. We have that for a reason. We're going to maintain it. And then when we're all said and done, that two inch gap is going to protect us from the ground freezing and potentially lifting the skirt before anything else does. Mostly because in that corner, the sun will come into that back corner and it'll melt the snow and then it'll freeze again. And we can get a freeze thaw cycle, even if it's minus, well, five, which is 20 degrees in the States, okay? <laughs> so that freeze thaw cycle can wreak havoc with my deck. So that's why I gotta make sure I maintain a gap. Here we go. So I got almost 18, so I'll go 16. And then at four feet, I'm gonna measure off 16, 17, with that kind of slope at eight feet long. Of course, it's here, that's where the board is. 16, 17, 18, that's very consistent. All right, so now we're gonna go cut the lattice, which is not very easy. I'm gonna show you some secrets. So here's my system. I always have a couple extra two by fours laying around, okay? What I wanna do, is make that square. We're gonna call that the top of the lattice. I'm gonna measure down so that my 16 is in the middle of this board. At the other end, my 18 is gonna be in the middle of the board, okay? 
That's how easy this is. All right, so now what I'm looking for, if we're really careful, we take a look at the staple placement. So the middle of my board is right here, and that's 16. Let's measure that off and put a mark. It's not very visible, but it's close to these staples. And if I was to measure 17, around the halfway mark, you're gonna see that at some point I'm gonna be cutting through a staple. <laughs> and this is where it gets tricky. Cutting through the staples is brutal. So what I wanna do is remember that since I'm using that, that bottom two inches of wood, I'm gonna throw a chalk line on, but when I'm cutting, I'm gonna be careful that every time I get close to a staple, I'm gonna adjust up or down a half an inch and finish my cut away from the staples. One, it's hard on the blade, but two, that damage usually ends up resulting in tears in the wood, okay? So we're gonna take a really simple here. I'm gonna get my chalk line and throw my measurement on and then we'll get started. Okay. Yep, you can do this alone. Here we go. Get the string tight, lay it on the line, lift and snap. Now I can identify where I'm cutting and where I'm gonna have a problem. So, in advance of cutting, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna cut straight here to about this point, okay? So I'll be short, and then I'm gonna go a little bit long here, and then I'll pick up the chalk around here. All right, good to have a plan. Know the end from the beginning. And then something like this is quite easy. We put the blade on our wood, and we try to get this down where it makes a little bit of sense. Here we go. I'm gonna walk along here, like on my knees basically, and reach over and do the cutting. But like I said, I'm gonna avoid the staples, finish through, jump cut, let's get this done. Not bad, I do say so myself. All right, whew, let's go install it. Now, this is a much more manageable piece. So I am going to start off at the end. You realize I still have like three inches of meat available here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna find a location that I can run a screw that isn't anywhere near a staple. All right. And now I'm just gonna lift it up. This is really delicate material, all right. Um, other options you can use instead of camo screws here. Honestly, um, Galvanized crown staples, basically the same product that they use to put this together. Okay, you can use the same thing, you can use a crown stapler. I don't mind using these screws just because they kind of pre-drill. But if you're going to use any other kind of wood screw to put this in, you're going to want to pre-drill the hole. It's just so skinny, it splits so easy. Here we go. All right, one for down here somewhere. Here's a good spot. So now we'll do the same thing with that lattice from the other side, okay? We'll cut from a straight line again and then measure down to our three locations. Now here's the secret sauce, right? We put the other half of that down. And it's not designed to close the gap completely. It's designed to get close, okay? So here, same thing. This one's a lot closer to the actual location. So I'm gonna let that be my third, my extra pair of hands. And I'm gonna start over here and lift it off the ground. Ah. Now, I intentionally left a little more gap here just because I know the nature of the freeze thaw and the way the sun works. There we go, okay. It won't be an issue at this end of the house. So we can lift it up a little bit more. That's it guys. That adds an incredible amount of durability to this. All right. And then what we do is we finish off with some decorative stone. You're not gonna see that in this video, but when the project's completely done, we're gonna add another step in another video. We're gonna do the decorative stone. We'll get there. Make sure you subscribe. Oh. 
Okay, one more little step to finish this off. We want to have the same level of protection at, at, on all four sides. So I've got to put in a top and bottom piece there. I want to do one where the joint is, and it'll never line up. So by adding that, that width, it, it gives that illusion that everything's fine. One more at the other end. And then all that's left for me to do is to add the um, skirt underneath the landing. Same thing, here we go. Let's set the depth of the blade, and then a little bit more. Mark off our two and a half here. Let's get our measurements. Uh -huh. 12 and 7 eighths. I'm never gonna remember that much detail at my age. <laughs> Rule number one when you're measuring materials, always write it down. Always. Oh. Phone's always gonna ring just as you're about to cut. And then you're gonna forget what you're doing. And to make things fast, measure from both ends and get two different pieces at the same time. Oh. And then the one in the middle, 16 and three quarters. That can be used for another piece of skirt another time. All right. Forty-nine, two at forty-nine, eh? Okay. I need at least sixteen. Two of those at forty-nine. There it is. We got that set up. Actually, you know what? We're only going 48 on that deck because that's how wide the lattice is. <laughs> I'm going to take an inch off of this. Okay. So the landing in total is 49 to the point. We're going to go 48. We'll stop a little bit shy and that'll be fine. Um, my plan here, and that's just being smart with materials, right? My sheets are four by eight, so I can cut the height of that and I can get both sides of this landing with half a sheet if I'm smart, depending on how tall this is. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna go like 18, 19 here, 19 and 21. The approach here, I know this one goes right to the ground, is to add extra stability. It doesn't get any direct sun, so I don't have a freeze thaw issue the same in the wintertime. I've also got it set up so that it's floating in the middle, it's attached on the left side, and it's sitting on the ground here. So it's no different than the platform with the stairs that were here before that were on the ground. In the winter, if this freezes and I get a bit of frost lift, that's fine. Everything here can move in and settle again in the spring. So I'm gonna go a little closer to the ground just to get the right look this time. Now with all that talking, I forgot my number. Uh, 19, 21, I think, yep. Good, by four feet, nice and easy. First step is to cut this at four feet. 19 and 21, here we go. 19, 21. I've already checked. The other side of the landing is not as, uh, not as far to the ground. So whatever my left over here is, 19 and 21, but I'm at four feet. Here's my 48. Okay, we'll go 19 from here. Uh, 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 uh. There we 
go. Okay. We're going to put it behind this board this time, compress it all in there. Largely because I've only got two locations to screw into. That gives me a little room. Remember, we're doing the gas work, so we're splitting this. One goes to the barbecue, one's going to the fire pit. We still have to do a little bit of work underneath here to connect the pipe, and that's fine. I got my pipes and my fittings and my string here. Just waiting for my gas guy to get back from vacation. It should be later this week. So then we'll be able to formulate an actual plan, which would be nice. Um, but for now, at least this is all done. So I'll close this little corner up later. Uh, now it's time to clean the deck off of all the materials, get the barbecue to the other side of the property. Yes, because otherwise it'll be trapped because we're gonna build a fence. Time to jump into the privacy fence. So real quick story before we get into this product and why I bought it. Um, you know, usually I go to Home Depot, that's my store. But when it comes to these boutique items, right? Like systems, Lowe's and Home Depot, they've got different brands, different competitors, different options. So I went to Home Depot and I saw the display, black aluminum with wood. I'm like, yay, inventory was brutal. I had to call around the city to find out who had the right posts. I went and got all the kit, it's exhausted. I just dropped it off. The other day I opened one of them up and I was like really disappointed because it's a square post. So that means every piece of wood I put on there, I'd have to screw a bracket into the wood and then into the post. I'm like, that's a hell of a lot of work. I know somebody's done something better than that. So went to Lowe's. No, I'm not sponsored. But look at this. Here's a close up of the aluminum and it has a U channel, okay? And the wood slides in and it comes with these clips that have teeth and it digs into the wood and then the next piece of wood digs into that piece of wood, it creates the spacer. Perfect every time, it's idiot proof. And I need that kind of help, right? So they have posts for the ends, for the outside corners, inside corners. Um, if you're just gonna continue the fence along, double U channel. So I was like, hallelujah, yes. Turns out this is the deal. When we first started this video series, we said, we got to quote 5,600 for the fence. And I said, nah, we'll do a deck. We'll throw a privacy screen on it. I mean, look around, this is all cedar, right? I spent 5,600 bucks to get this far. So having said that, yeah, I'm a little over budget. <laughs> But it's not in the end of the world. My lattice was 200 bucks. This privacy fence is going to be 800 for the metal post because I've got one section there and I got three sections down here. That's a lot of posts. And then 800 for the wood, which I bought a bunch of one by one by 10 cedar. The five quarter board, which means it's designed to fit in this space because this fence is designed for the five quarter board or like treks if you want to do something like that. If you've got a beautiful backyard with treks and you want to bring it up for a privacy wall, you can do that with this product. All right. Ah, it has all the hardware, the base covers, the plates, the screws, everything. So yay, much better option. Um, about the same price as those other metal posts anyway. So I think I only, I only spent another 150 bucks, Matt, more than Home Depot. So the hell with it. We're going with this. So cheers for someone carrying a solution in stock even. Like when do you get a solution to a problem in stock nowadays? That just doesn't happen. Let me start with, uh, this is two ends, okay? Here, we'll just open this up. And I have the other box there. Here's the product. All right, this is the, the U-channel that goes in the middle, okay? So you have to get the right box and they have different heights. Great, great, I mean, like as far as an in-stock solution, God, gotta love it. Now, right out of the gate. And I have not used this kind of a system yet. I'm excited. Ah. It marks the bottom, which is good because it probably has machine screws with a plate that gets attached, right? Um, this is not packaging. This is not just for shipping, okay? Leave this on until after you're done installing, until after you're done staining, huh? Especially if you're gonna do it like we do. This can actually be a protective coating, okay? So that you can, you can, well, I'm gonna actually take a knife and slice it up a little bit. But I wanna be able to set everything up and then just spray it. I got a stain that it's a water base. I'm gonna put a pump bucket, I'm gonna spray it. So I'm gonna clean all this up here real quick so that I can just do my thing. This is the dullest knife in history. So this is the one that I got off you, you cleaned up the thing on the ground, right? Okay, that's what I'm looking at. I'm gonna get a new plate. <laughs> this isn't gonna work. We're just gonna trim it back so that when we, we're done, we can actually spray this and then take the plastic off afterwards, okay? 
piece of cake. We're gonna get set up. We're gonna set up our posts, get our hardware installed, line everything up. Beautiful. I need one of those over there. I need one of these over here. Top and bottom. Which what? I don't know now. Why isn't this one marked top and bottom? Oh, there it is. Machine screws. Maybe it's universal. Yep, this one's universal. No, it's not. That's not machine threaded. There we go. <laughs> Make sure you check. These holes are machine drilled. Okay, so that the plate can be attached. This location, this location. Got it? And then afterwards you can screw through the front. So make sure we line up the tops and bottoms. We'll cut back the extra plastic. We'll get our decorative caps and our hardware out. Get this job site organized. That's the next one for the middle. Maybe this blade will be better. Yeah, that's exactly what I'm talking about. Okay, so that post is ready. Nice. Goes down there. Ah. Now, the only other things you need for this job, take two minutes, read the instructions, grab a chop saw on a stand. To everybody out there who's in the DIY space, who's using a chop saw in the grass, just a word of warning, guys. Um, it's actually incredibly dangerous. It's so easy to lose your balance or if somebody bumps you from behind. If you put it up on a stand, then it'll save your back and it'll make it a lot safer. You won't accidentally get thrust into the blade while it's moving. I know I'm not much for safety, but sometimes, once you've seen an accident, it will change your mind about how you're doing things. and it's aluminum anyway. So even if I scratch the aluminum, it doesn't rust. Okay, important, blah, blah, blah. Okay, don't return product to the store. You gotta love it when a company says that. Um, maximum six feet, and then the top one goes in and screws to the board. This will help keep the fence steady and simple. That's what that is, good. All right, now we understand how to use this stuff. That wasn't that tricky. One, two, three, four, five, six, there it is. Well, let's see if we can get these on. The time of the manner here. Okay. All right, ready? I don't even know if this is the right size for this. Yeah. Just a word of warning whenever you're working with things that are machined like this, do them as much as you can with your fingers, all four of them, before you pull in out these kind of drivers. If anything is mildly off in the manufacturing process, once you get the first screw in a plate nice and tight, everything else is gonna be shifted and adjusted. You'll never be able to get the other one lined up. Now we got it going. We're gonna tighten it up real good. Alrighty then. Okay. Now placement of these posts is very important. Remember I um, have overhang, I have one inch here of just regular wood. So, and I have a two inch overhang here. So we wanna to try to make this intentional. One and three quarters. One and three quarters. Good. Happy with that. I'm going to use these pieces of hardware here. Now, these are not normal screws. Um, I had leftovers. I'm going to actually show you the package when Matt gets back. He went shopping to get more for me. <laughs> of, of all the hardware that came in that package, they didn't have mounting screws. But these are perfect. It's actually part of the structural screw system for the overhead decorative uh, metal brackets, the black powder coated black brackets. So I know that they're gonna be more than enough for this. Again, the secret is gonna to be to pre-drill, so I'm gonna set up for pre-drilling and then we can get this mounted. All right, now. Because we're drilling into structural lumber, I'm not gonna pre-drill three inches. Just wanna pre-drill, get past the cedar surface so that nothing splits on me. So I'm looking at about an inch. I have no idea exactly how square this is going to be. So, that is what we're going to do. We're going to put in two for now, and then I'll put in the next post, and then we'll start installing the wood. We'll get everything detailed later and add the last two screws later. Okay. 
and I'm not even drilling this all the way in. Just enough that I can get this thing built. <laughs> all right, now that's good for all my hardware. I have 10 foot boards. I'm gonna go with five foot sections. And then this is more of a four and the last section there is gonna be a little over five. So that's fine. I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna set up my saw right now because I'm gonna cut all my wood in advance. And then just, this is just assembly work. So the secret here is to have a saw stand and set up what's called the saw stop. Okay, that's the limitation to the material. So now I can measure, that's my five foot mark. Let's see if this wood is just a little longer. Yes, it's five and a quarter. Good. This saw can slide on my, on my table here. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna slide my table until it's the perfect spot that I want looking for. And then I'm gonna lock it in. Okay, now every time I put wood on this side, it's gonna finish at five feet. And, and that's a little sloppy. I'm gonna lift this up just a little bit more. There, that's better. It figures it would have a difference, see? Eh? All right. Here we go. Now, that's one foot for the first section. That's awesome. These are six and a half foot posts. Let's go with a half inch gap, makes that actual six. 12 is six feet. We'll cut 12 boards in half and then we'll start from there. That's a dumb spot for it. Let's see if everything is working out okay. No. <laughs> so we are going to add these stops. <laughs> Boom, we just set a spacer for how high our wood goes. Loving that. Uh, we'll do the same with this. Done. And now we're gonna use the first piece of wood in order to establish where this post goes. <sighs> I wasn't gonna do it, but I'm thinking. I'm not liking the furry ends. I'm gonna see it through the gaps. So, quality first. Better get out the palm sander and clean these ends up. Right, so here I am thinking, oh, last day, we'll just get her done. But I don't know, I've probably spent at least an hour and a half or two hours sanding all the edges of my cut so far. I'm not gonna stop now. Okay, now we can do it. There we go. So now really the only question left is, how much mercy do I want, right? Because there's no mercy there right now. But I throw in a quarter, and these gaps are actually pretty consistently, there's gotta be three, well, they're five eighths gap. So that's pretty heavy. So I'm gonna throw in a quarter inch gap mercy for aesthetics, one and three quarters off the back. We'll keep that consistent. Three quarter gap to there. Checking all your line of sights because you have curved wood and weird stuff going on. That looks relatively square. I'm gonna throw two screws here. Pilot hole. Just get that first inch. We'll drive the other two. And that'll be enough to keep this in place until Matt gets back. Meantime, I'm gonna finish building the rest of this and show you how it's done. Okay. Wow, loving it. So here are the spacers. Perfect. The trick is they slide in. Everything is gonna slide in these grooves, okay? Look at that. It actually, it's gonna hide the ends. So I won't see any of my ends. Ooh, maybe I can cheat. Now you'll notice there's a little bit of room left to right here. Most of the wind that I get comes from this side. So I'm gonna intentionally try to push my wood back when I set my spacers. 
and there's got to be an easier way. I think I'm going to get a hammer and a wooden block. And when I put the next piece in, I'll drop, give it a little love tap. All right, so I don't need a, I don't need to worry about that. So we'll go gentle for now. Make sure that I'm splitting up that gap, push it to the back of the rail, set it in. <laughs> Everything in life was this easy, eh? There we go. I know I paid a little bit for the materials, but honestly, this install, oh, making up for it. Okay, last thing I wanna check is how wide it is at the top versus the bottom. I don't wanna start getting too comfortable. My gap is 58 and an eight. Oh, it's actually tighter at the top right now. Good. I wanna apologize right now for everybody who's watching this video. I was expecting to see all kinds of great carpentry tricks today. <laughs> Sometimes the best trick is to just buy a product that makes your life easy. Right, it's about working hard. No, it's about working smart, not hard, right? There we go. Well, that's about as consistent as you're ever gonna get. Okay, so I'm just gonna do this exactly until the very end. Wow, all of a sudden, there are people out there all over the country watching this going, I can't believe how much I paid my carpenter to do that. <laughs> if you're looking for a gig economy business to get into, um, you can build a small deck in a day. And then you can do a privacy fence like this in an afternoon the next day. That's uh, something to consider. Because this, this is one hell of a way to make a living. I have extras anyway. That's still not gonna fit in. Oh. Still doesn't fit. Okay, so it's unanimous. Um, one vote and I made it. Uh, <laughs> alternating spaces of five and a half inch deck boards with a half inch space leaves me with this little bit of height left over. I'm not sure what everybody was thinking about, but I'm just going with double spacer, double spacer. Gonna do it consistently across the board. That allows me to put my decorative cap on. To me, it's a win. If you have a different idea, or if you think it would be better to, to stop with this last board here and just not have that space. Interesting point is I'm five, ten and a half. I don't know why I count the half. 5'11 in shoes. Matt's a little over six foot, so with this board gone, he's looking right over the top of that as he's walking around. So, a lot of tall people in my family. So we're gonna opt to add the extra height so we actually have the privacy we're paying for here. That makes sense? Let me know in the comments section if you have a different opinion. So you can see, basically what happened here is we, we were just following a one space per board, nice and simple, just like it is in the picture on the package. But what happened is when we're using cedar, we get to the top and the wood was too high to put the decorative cap on. I was like, well, that was kind of stupid. So it became an issue and it was gonna be higher than the aluminum itself, about a half an inch higher. So we took it apart and came back and we went with a, a double stack system. So double stack, spacer double stack, and then that gives us a place where the, the cap can go on. Not really a big issue, I guess. It's just be, uh, it'd be nice if it was more consistent. But if I took the extra board off and added all the other spacers, this board only comes up to this high. And that's not as much privacy as we want back here. So we do, we do what we do. Just a real, real warning. If you're gonna go this tall and do the spacing system, 
while you're at the store buying your package, buy an extra package of spacers. They don't give you any more than what's necessary to get the boards to this height. Okay? Just so you're aware.